Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Do you want to learn English but you don't know where to start? Don't worry, today I will help you. Let's get started. Recently, something shocked me. I asked my students to choose their own level, beginner, intermediate, or advanced in English. And 25% of you chose beginner. This shocked me because most of my YouTube videos and all of my English courses are for intermediate and advanced English learners. So I'm sorry to my precious beginner English learners, I want to help you. For the past year, I have worked very hard to create a beginner English course for you, and today I would like to show you a free sample of that course. Introducing the Fearless Fluency Club Beginner. You will be able to speak about your family, food, your house, traveling, your free time activities. What a wonderful start to your English journey. Today you will see module three, which is about the house. I recommend clicking CC to view the full subtitles. This way you don't miss any words. To help you remember everything that you learn in today's lesson, I have created a free PDF worksheet with all of the vocabulary, all of the grammar, all of the pronunciation, plus you can answer Vanessa's challenge question using what you've learned. You can click on the link in the description to download this free PDF worksheet today. If you enjoyed this lesson, I invite you to join me in the Fearless Fluency Club Beginner, where you can finally learn real English and speak confidently. Course member Ildiko said, this course is fantastic. I like the most that you teach us real English, not classroom English, real English spoken by real American English speakers. Elaine from Brazil said that she joined the course to improve her English, but then something surprised her. What surprised me even more was the wonderful community and the opportunity to meet and interact with so many wonderful friends around the world. Love it. Great, Elaine. You can click on the link in the description to join me in the Fearless Fluency Club beginner. And if you join the course and you think, this is too easy for me, no problem. Within two weeks of your purchase, send me an email and I can switch you to the intermediate level. No problem, no hassle, very easy. So let's test if the Fearless Fluency Club beginner can help you to really improve your English speaking skills. The course uses the conversation breakdown method. This method helps you to catch the real meaning of conversations and learn real vocabulary, real expressions, and real pronunciation used in daily life. This lesson is just a short sample of the full course. In the full course, you get five modules, but in this lesson, there's only one. So let's test if the conversation breakdown method in the Fearless Fluency Club can help you to level up your English. Let's get started by watching a quick conversation. Welcome to the Fearless Fluency Club beginner conversation lesson. Let's watch Vanessa, me, and Dan clean the house. Listen for all of the vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation that you learned in the module three lessons. And don't forget to check out the guide, how to use this course for more tips about learning with this conversation. Let's get started. Hey Dan, aren't you ready to tidy up? No, I'm not. It'll take all day and I'm trying to find my hockey stick. No, it won't take all day, and maybe we can find your stick while we clean. Okay, what's the first thing we need to do? Hmm. We need to find the cleaning supplies. Hmm. They're below the kitchen sink, hmm. and the vacuum and the broom are inside the closet in the dining room. Ah, okay. Hey, aren't you going to get the supplies? I will, but can you do the laundry? The washing machine is empty, so we'll be able to wash the pillowcases, the sheets, and the comforter. Okay, 
that's a good idea. I don't think everything will fit in the washer. It'll overflow. <sighs> I'll start with the sheets. Where's the laundry basket? It isn't on top of the dresser in the bedroom. Hmm, that's where we always put it. I didn't move it. Hmm. I found it. You're not going to believe where it was. Was it between the bookshelf and the TV? By the coffee table? Next to the bathroom cabinet. No, it was outside. Oh, wow, well, I'm glad you found it. All right, Vanessa, what's next? Well, we need to clean the rug and the carpet in the living room. You can do that. I'll clean the bathroom. Oh, don't forget to scrub between the sink and the toilet. I'll wipe down the mirror, too. Ugh. Do you need any help? I'm trying to move the couch, but it doesn't want to move, and I don't want to scratch the floor. That's because there's something under it, silly. I didn't see anything. Look, beside the lamp, it'll surprise you. <laughs> it's your hockey stick. Did you enjoy that conversation about finding Dan's hockey stick and cleaning the house? Now it's time to move on to a vocabulary lesson so you can use the same vocabulary that we used in that conversation. Let's go. Are you ready to naturally talk about cleaning and organizing in English? In this lesson, you will learn some common verbs that we use to talk about cleaning and organizing. And then I will show you in my house some items that are often used in this topic, cleaning and organizing. Let's get started with the verbs. To clean. I clean the kitchen. Are you cleaning? Let's say it together. Are you ready? Speak out loud. Use your voice. You can do it. I clean the kitchen. I clean the kitchen. Try this. I clean the floor in the bathroom. I clean the floor in the bathroom. The floor is on the ground. I clean the floor in the bathroom. To tidy up. To tidy up. Say this with me. I tidy up the kitchen table. I tidy up the kitchen table. To tidy up is used when a lot of things are piled up. Maybe there's a jacket, a cup, a shirt, a bag on the table. You need to tidy up the table. Say this with me. I tidy up the coffee table in the living room. The coffee table is a short table in front of your couch. It's for books, for cups, for playing, for kids, for anything. It's a coffee table. Say this with me. I tidy up the coffee table in the living room. Some people say living room. Some people say family room or main room. Some people say great room. It's your choice. For me, I say the living room. This is where I live. This is the living room. To lock, to lock. I lock the front door. Do you lock your front door? Say the sentence with me. I lock the front door. I lock the front door. Or, <gasps> oops, I forgot to lock the front door. To find. When you look for something, oh, there it is. I find my favorite mug for tea. Or in the past, you can say, yesterday, I found my favorite mug. Yesterday, I found my favorite mug. Can you say this sentence with me? I find the broom and the vacuum in the closet. Say it together. I find the broom and the vacuum in the closet. We need a broom to clean. We need a vacuum to clean, but we need to find them. They are in the closet. Now that we practiced some common verbs for cleaning and organizing, 
let's go into my house and I will show you some common items that you will need to know to talk about your house. Let's go. I'm in the kitchen. The kitchen. Say it with me. I'm in the kitchen. I'm in the living room. I'm in the living room. This is the wall. This is the wall. This is the floor. This is the floor. This is the carpet. This is the carpet. Or this is the rug. This is the rug. Usually a rug is small and a carpet is big. This is the ceiling. The ceiling. This is the ceiling. There are books on the bookshelf. Say it with me. There are books on the bookshelf. The TV is on the wall. The TV is on the wall. My mug is on the coffee table. My mug is on the coffee table. The coffee table is a small table in the living room for coffee, books, toys, games, anything. The pillow is on the couch. The pillow is on the couch. Some people say sofa. The pillow is on the sofa. Both are correct. Sofa or couch. For me, I say couch. The pillow is on the couch. The lamp is beside the couch. The lamp is beside the couch. This is the dining room. We eat in the dining room. I sit on a kitchen chair. Can you say it with me? I sit on a kitchen chair and this is the kitchen table. This is the kitchen table. But I need to tidy up the kitchen table. I tidied up the kitchen table. This is the bedroom. The bedroom. Can you say it with me? This is the bedroom. In the bedroom is a bed. Let's talk about the bed. There are pillows. Can you say it with me? There are the pillows. There are the pillows. And I have a comforter. Say it with me. A comforter. Under the comforter is a sheet. A sheet. Say it with me. I have two sheets. I have two sheets under my comforter. I put my clothes in the dresser. In the dresser. Can you say it with me? I put my clothes in the dresser. This is the bathroom. This is the bathroom. And in the bathroom, there is a sink. You can say, this is the bathroom sink. Say it with me. This is the bathroom sink. Or just, this is the sink. This is the sink. In the bathroom, there is a mirror. A mirror. I know this word is tough. Say it with me slowly. Mirror. Mirror. This is the mirror. And inside the mirror is a cabinet. A cabinet. My cabinet has medicine and other things. Can you say it with me? The bathroom cabinet. This is the bathroom cabinet. In the bathroom, there is a toilet. A toilet. This is the toilet. Can you say it with me? This is the toilet. This is the shower. The shower. Say it with me. This is the shower. Or this is the bathtub. The bathtub. This is a bathtub. This is the washing machine. The washing machine. Sometimes we say washer. This is the washer. The laundry basket is on top of the washer. And the broom is also on top of the washer. Can you say this with me? This is the washing machine. This is the washer. The laundry basket is on top of the washer. 
The broom is on top of the washer too. Great work practicing these cleaning and organizing house words. The next step is to review this lesson, watch it again and again, and please speak out loud with me. Repeat my sentences out loud. It will help you to remember these words a lot. Well, thanks so much, and I'll see you the next time. Bye. How did you enjoy that vocabulary lesson? Now it's time for a grammar lesson about prepositions of place so that you can use these words on, between, on top of, under, in your daily life. Plus a little quiz. Let's go. Where's the fork? Where's the bowl? Where's the cup? Let's talk about prepositions of place in today's lesson. You are going to master how to explain where an item is located. I'm going to help you with some similar words, and after each section, there will be a little test, so pay attention. Let's start with these three words, above, on top of, and on. I want you to say these sentences with me. Are you ready? The picture is above the piano. The picture is above the piano. It is not touching the piano. It is above the piano. Say this with me. The food is on top of the fridge. The food is on top of the fridge. It is touching the fridge. The food is on top of the fridge. Say this sentence. The plates are on the shelf. The plates are on the shelf. The plates are touching the shelf. So what's the difference? On top of or on? Usually on top of is a high place. On top of the fridge. And on is everything else on the shelf, on the table, on the floor. It's not a high place. So, are you ready for a little test? Where is the bowl? Is the bowl above the plate? Is the bowl on top of the plate? Or is the bowl on the plate? I'll give you three seconds to choose. Three. The bowl is on the plate. It's not super high, it's touching the plate, so the bowl is on the plate. Take a look at these words, under, below, under, below. Can you say this sentence with me? The sheets are under the comforter. One more time. The sheets are under the comforter. Well, you can also say, the sheets are below the comforter, but do you know what? The word below is not commonly used. It's more common to say under. The sheets are under the comforter. What about these words? Underneath, beneath. The sheets are underneath the comforter. The sheets are beneath the comforter. These words are very formal. We don't often use underneath or beneath in daily conversation. So your best choice is under. Let's have a little test. Where is the cup? Hmm, is the cup under the plate? Is the cup below the plate? Is the cup underneath the plate? Or is the cup beneath the plate? I'll give you three seconds to choose the best answer. Three, two, one. The cup is under the plate. All of these words are okay, but the best word for daily conversation is just under. The cup is under the plate. Next we have behind, in front of. Behind and in front of are opposites. Take a look at this sentence. Say it out loud with me. The broom is behind the laundry basket. Or, the laundry basket is in front of the broom. Great. 
These are opposites. Their placement is opposite. Let's have a test sentence. Where is the fork? Is the fork behind the cup or is the fork in front of the cup? I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. The fork is in front of the cup. Can you say that with me? The fork is in front of the cup. Great work. The next prepositions are between, beside, and next to. Can you say this sentence with me? The sink is between the shelf and the laundry basket. Between. There is something on both sides. Let's say it one more time. The sink is between the shelf and the laundry basket. What about this? The shelf is beside the sink. The shelf is next to the sink. Beside? Next to? What's the difference? I have good news. Both of these expressions are the same. And we use both expressions in daily life. So you have a choice. Can you say the sentence with me? The shelf is beside the sink. The shelf is next to the sink. Great work. Are you ready for a test? Where is the bowl? Where is the bowl? Is the bowl between the fork and the cup? Is the bowl next to the cup? Or is the bowl beside the cup? Choose the best option. I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. The bowl is beside the cup. Or the bowl is next to the cup. What about the other things? The cup is between the fork and the bowl because there's something on both sides. Great. Take a look at these words. Near, close by, and by. Hmm. Are they similar? Are they different? Look at these sentences. The coffee table is near the couch. Can you say it with me? The coffee table is near the couch. Or, the coffee table is close by the couch. Are you saying it with me? The coffee table is close by the couch. Or finally, the coffee table is by the couch. The coffee table is by the couch. I have more good news. These three words have the same meaning. You can use them whenever you want because all three are the same. Let's have a little test. Where is the fork? Where's the fork? The fork is near the cup. The fork is close to the plate. Or the fork is by the plate. Hmm. What's the best option? I'll tell you in three, two, one. The fork is close to the plate. Or the fork is by the plate. Their location is close to each other. It's of course correct to say near, but the fork is not near the cup. Instead, we can say the fork is near the plate. Great work. Look at these words. In, inside. Are they similar? Are they different? Let's look at some sentences. The soap is in the bottle. The soap is in the cabinet. The soap is inside the cabinet. What's the difference? Well, really, they have the same meaning. But we use in more commonly in daily conversation. It's not wrong. It's not weird to say the soap is inside the cabinet. It's fine, but it's more common to say the soap is in the cabinet. Let's have a little test sentence. Where is the fork? Where's the fork? The fork is inside the cup or the fork is in the cup? Which one is the best for daily conversation? Can you say it out loud? I'll give you three, two. The fork is in the cup. The fork is in the cup. Great work. Look at our last two prepositions of place. Out of or outside or outside of. 
look at these sentences and say them out loud with me. The shirt is out of the dresser. Or, the shirt is outside the dresser. Or, the shirt is outside of the dresser. With the word outside, you have two choices. Outside the dresser, or you can add of. Outside of the dresser, both options are great and very natural, so it's your choice. But what is the difference between the shirt is out of the dresser and the shirt is outside of the dresser? Well, the first option, the shirt is out of the dresser, means the shirt was in the dresser and it moved out of the dresser. So we are thinking about where it was before. There's some movement that happens. Let me give you another example. I am out of the car. I am out of the car. This means before I was in the car and I moved out of the car. What about the second sentence? The shirt is outside of the dresser. The shirt is outside of the dresser. Okay, it is a statement, a fact. There's no movement, just, oh, the shirt is outside of the dresser. Same for people. I am outside of the car. I am standing outside of the car. Maybe I was never in the car. My body just outside of the car. So it's more about placement instead of movement. So are you ready for a little challenge test sentence? Yes, you can do it. Where is the bowl? Where's the bowl? <gasps> Tell me, where's the bowl? I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. The bowl is out of the box. The bowl is out of the box. Why is out of correct? Because you saw it was in the box and now it moved out of the box. But let's imagine this is our original situation. You don't know where the bowl was before. You can use either. The bowl is out of the box or the bowl is outside the box. The bowl is outside of the box. If this is what you see, no problem. You can use both options. Great work practicing all of these prepositions of placement. I recommend now going back and reviewing this lesson, speaking out loud, practicing all of these sentences. And also make sure you listen for these prepositions while you watch English movies, TV shows, songs, because I know that you will hear them in daily conversation and I want you to be able to use them naturally yourself. Well, great work, and I'll see you again the next time. Bye. Now that you feel more comfortable with under, on top of, beside these prepositions of place, let's go on to the pronunciation lesson. To speak real English and express yourself as naturally as possible, you need to use contractions. What's a contraction? Well, let's find out. Are you ready to speak English more clearly? Let's do it. In this lesson, you will master how to use contractions in daily English. What's a contraction? A contraction is two words put together with an apostrophe, like this. I plus am is I'm. Notice the letter A is gone. It's because the apostrophe replaced A. So you can say, I'm, I'm. It's not a problem to say, I am, but in daily English, it is very common to use a contraction, I'm. Most contractions use a pronoun. A pronoun is I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Let's start by talking about contractions with the verb to be. Let's get to work. Because this is a pronunciation lesson, you need to be active. You need to speak out loud. I want you to repeat the sentences out loud with me. Don't 
think the sentences, say them out loud. This will help your pronunciation muscles and your confidence. Let's see some common contractions with to be. I am I'm. Say it with me. I'm. I'm cleaning under the couch. Say it with me. I'm cleaning under the couch. You are your. Say it with me. Your. Let's say a sentence together. You're cooking breakfast. You're cooking breakfast. Great. Let's change the first word. He is, he's cooking breakfast. Say it with me. He's cooking breakfast. Or she is, she's cooking breakfast. Say it with me. She's cooking breakfast. It is, it's my favorite food. Say it with me. It's my favorite food. We are, we're cleaning the whole house. Say it with me. We're cleaning the whole house. I didn't say we are cleaning. I said we're. Say that with me. We're. Great. They are there. There. They're coming to visit. Say it with me. They're coming to visit. Before we talk about adding a negative word, not, let's talk about some contractions that don't use a pronoun, but they use the verb to be. That is, that's, that's my dinner. Say it with me. That's my dinner. There is, there's. There's my dinner. Say it with me. There's my dinner. What is? What's my dinner? Say it with me. What's my dinner? Great. Let's move on to some negative contractions. Is plus not makes isn't. Isn't. Which letter is gone? The letter O. He isn't tidying up. Can you say it with me? He isn't tidying up. R plus not is aren't. Aren't. We aren't organized. Can you say it with me? We aren't organized. Great. Let's review these contractions with to be before we go on to some other verbs. I want you to say them out loud with me. Are you ready? I'm cleaning. You're cleaning. He's cleaning. She's cleaning. It's clean. We're cleaning. They're cleaning. That's my broom. There's my broom. What's a broom? It isn't a broom. They aren't brooms. Great practice. Okay, let's go on to some contractions that use another verb, do. We only use contractions with do when we include the word not. So this is taking it to the next level. Do you remember he isn't? This is a negative contraction, isn't. We are gonna do the same thing with the verb do. Take a look at this. I don't like hot dogs. <laughs> I don't. What's happening here? We have do plus not, and the O is gone. It is replaced with an apostrophe, same as isn't or aren't, which also have the O gone and an apostrophe. So do you think you can say the sentence with me? I don't like hot dogs. I don't like hot dogs. Great. Or we can use the past tense. I 
didn't tidy up my bedroom. Can you say that with me? We have did plus not. Say it out loud. I didn't tidy up my bedroom. Great. Next we have does plus not. Doesn't. Doesn't. Can you say it with me? Doesn't. Let's put it in a sentence. He doesn't like to clean the bathroom. He doesn't like to clean the bathroom. Mm, great work. The next contractions include the word will. We use will for the future, something that will happen in the future. Take a look at this. I'll introduce you to my cousin. I'll introduce you. What's that first word? I plus will is I'll. Here, two letters are gone. Do you know what they are? I'll. W and I are gone. So you can say, I'll introduce you to my cousin. Can you say that with me? I'll introduce you to my cousin. Great. What about this? You will you'll. You'll. Make sure you have a clear L. Your tongue is between your teeth. You'll, you'll love this cake. Can you say that sentence with me? You'll love this cake. Great. What about these words? He will, she will, it will. Let's take out W and I and make it he'll, she'll, it'll. Say this sentence with me. He'll clean the whole house. She'll clean the whole house. It'll be clean. Can you say that again with me? He'll clean the whole house. She'll clean the whole house. It'll be clean. Okay, let's go on to the next one. They plus will is they'll. They'll. Say it with me. They'll. They'll watch TV in the living room. Can you say this sentence? Yes, of course you can. They'll watch TV in the living room. We plus will is we'll. We'll. We'll meet my sister tomorrow. We'll meet my sister tomorrow. Next, I have a negative contraction using will. What is will plus not? Hmm, there is an unusual change that happens. Will plus not becomes won't, won't. So here we are taking out the I, but we are adding O. Don't forget this, this is an exception. <laughs> won't. Won't. Let's say a sentence. They won't be happy if we are late. Say it with me. They won't be happy if we are late. Great work. Let's review these contractions with will. Say it out loud with me. I'll tidy up. You'll tidy up. He'll tidy up. She'll tidy up. It'll be tidied up. They'll tidy up. We'll tidy up. We won't tidy up. Great work practicing these natural contractions. It will help your speech to become more fluent and for you to become more confident when you speak. I recommend reviewing this lesson, speaking out loud, and listening for contractions while you're watching TV, while you're listening to songs. You can do it. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you the next time. Bye. 
Are your pronunciation muscles warmed up? I hope so, because now it's time to speak. Let's check out the speaking lesson. Let's go. Are you ready to practice speaking English with me? Yes, let's do it. Today, you will practice five questions from the vocabulary lesson, five questions from the grammar lesson, and five questions from the pronunciation lesson in module three. I will ask the question, I want you to listen, and then speak out loud. Answer out loud. Don't answer in your head, answer out loud. And when I pause, I will listen to you. Wherever you live, I will listen to your answer. So please be active, speak out loud. If you need more time, you can click pause on the video answer for more time, and then continue the video. All right, are you ready for five questions from the vocabulary lesson? Let's start. Where can I find the broom to sweep the floor? Hmm, you could say, you can find the broom in the closet. Great, I want you to make a full sentence. You could say, in the closet, but this is too short for our speaking practice. I want you to make a full sentence. The broom is in the closet. The broom to sweep the floor is in the closet. This is very good. Let me ask again. Where can I find the broom to sweep the floor? Great work. When will you tidy up the living room? How often do you clean the kitchen? Did you find that coffee mug? Notice this question. You can say yes, or you can say no, but this does not practice the key vocabulary. So please make a full sentence, yes, I found the coffee mug, or no, I did not find the coffee mug. Great, a full sentence. Do you know someone who doesn't lock their door? Excellent, let's go on to five questions from the grammar lesson. What is on that shelf? You could say, there is a book on the shelf. Great, let me ask again. What is on that shelf? How often do you clean under the fridge? Who put the cookies on top of the freezer? Do you always put dirty laundry in the laundry basket? What is next to your bed? Great work. Let's go on to five questions from the pronunciation lesson. Do you know what time we're meeting for dinner? You can say, we're meeting for dinner at seven o'clock. Great, please use the contraction. We're meeting for dinner at seven o'clock. Let me ask again. Do you know what time we're meeting for dinner? Why isn't the laundry basket in the closet? Why aren't you ready yet? <laughs> Do you think they'll love the dessert? Why didn't you tidy up before the party?
great work practicing all of these questions and speaking out loud. I recommend reviewing this lesson and continuing to practice your speaking skills. I'll see you again the next time. Bye. Great job getting out of your comfort zone and speaking in English. In the Fearless Fluency Club, along with vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and speaking lessons, you'll get access to the MP3 versions, full subtitles, and PDF transcripts so that you can study while you're cooking, driving, or even sleeping. Each module includes a lesson guide, which is like a mini textbook that I've created for you so that you have all the information in one convenient place. Heli from Mexico said, this is the best course I've ever had. Wonderful, Heli. You'll also have access to a community of motivated English learners so that you can practice speaking in English and meet friends from around the world. A lot of members speak together on Skype, Facebook, Zoom, on a weekly basis, sometimes even daily. It's a great way to make friends around the world and practice speaking English. Plus, I host weekly live lessons in our private Facebook group so that you can stay motivated and I can answer your questions directly. Click on the link below this video to join me in the Fearless Fluency Club beginner and start speaking real American English today. And now I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments who cleans your house. Is it you? Is it your mom? Your husband? Maybe nobody? <laughs> Let me know in the comments who cleans your house. And thank you so much for learning English with me. I will see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye! The next step is to download the free PDF worksheet for this lesson. With this free PDF, you will master today's lesson and never forget what you have learned. You can be a confident English speaker. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for a free English lesson every Friday. Bye!